Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to learn about contrast path therapy. So, let's get started! What is contrast path? Contrast path is a physical energy modality that describes the repeated immersion of a limb in hot then cold water for a specified timing, duration, and temperature. The purpose of contrast path include to reduce edema, to increase tissue blood flow, and also to reduce joint stiffness. Moving on to the indication and contraindication for contrast bath. Contrast bath is suitable to be used for patients with foot and ankle sprains, carpal tunnel syndromes, edema, and also chronic inflammation. However, it is not suitable to be used for patients with open wound, impact sensation, infected wound, and also skin allergy. So, what is the underlying principle of contrast bath in physical therapy by alternating hot and cold water? The immersion of limb in hot water leads the normal artery or blood vessel to widen where this process is known as vasodilation. Vasodilation enhances blood flow to areas of the body that lack of oxygen or nutrients. In contrast, the immersion of limb in cold water results the normal artery or blood vessels, causes vasoconstriction in which aids in rapidly closing the body's blood arteries. This enhancement in blood circulation helps in reducing edema as well as swelling. Not only that, when exposed to cold water, the limb veins will be constricted. While when exposed to hot water, the limb's veins will be relaxed. However, compared to circulatory system, the lymphatic system has no central pump. Thus, when hot and cold water are applied alternately, thus, there is intermittent vasoconstriction and vasodilation of the blood vessel, which results in a vascular pumping action. This pumping action enhances tissue waste product transportation that reduces edema, improves limb function, and promotes a quicker recovery in body system. Now, let's learn the procedure to do contrast path therapy. For general instruction, firstly, we should monitor and maintain the water temperature by adding more warm or ice water to the respective bulb. Next, always treat a larger area than that is injured. For example, a spread ankle should have the water nearly up to the midfoot. We also need to make sure to remove all jewellery before beginning the treatment. We should always start with hot water and end with cold. However, hot water should be used last in any of this situation. The equipment needed are containers filled with hot and cold water with respective temperature and also a thermometer. So, to start the treatment, firstly, we need to prepare two buckets filled with hot and cold water respectively. Then. Fully submerge the edematic part first in the bucket of warm water for 3 minutes and move the part around through the full, pain-free range of motion. After 3 minutes, remove the part from the first bucket and immediately submerge them in the bucket of cold water for 1 minute. The ratio used for hot and cold treatment is 3 to 1. The parts were alternately submerged between hot and cold buckets until they had been given 5 hot and 4 cold treatments beginning and ending with hot water for 19 minutes. This is the summary of the treatment procedure that we demonstrated earlier. However, there is a lack of standardized method for contrast bath. So here, we provide some of the literatures with different protocols for contrast bath specific to the study schemes and condition. Moving on to the precautions before conducting contrast bath. The first one is open wound. Open wound is sensitive to heat and cold. Hence, it may not be able to withstand the application of contrast bath. Next is pregnancy. Contrast bath should not be applied over a pregnant uterus as it may increase the circulation to the fetus. Advanced age. If the patient has a fragile skin, they may unable to adjust to the higher temperature caused by the heat. Menstruation. Heat applied to the lower back or over the pelvis during menses may increase menstrual flow. So, the heat application might be indicated depending on the sign and symptom of the physical therapy diagnosis. Impaired cognitive ability. If a patient is able to communicate about heat, cold, and pain, then contrast path may have applied. However, the patient should be monitored closely. Previous experiences with physical agents. This is because bad experiences with thermal agent makes the patient hesitate to try it again. Hence, therapists need to educate the patient about the benefit of the modality. Evidence for this intervention. Firstly, in a study made by Vile et al. in 2007, 13 recreational athletes were recruited and required to perform contrast water therapy after each DOMS inducing leg protocol. The study used a time ratio of 2 times 1 for a total of 15 minutes in a temperature of around 40 to 42 degrees Celsius and 8 to 10 degrees Celsius for hot and cold water respectively. From the study, it was found that contrast water therapy could significantly reduce swelling in a long-term period and immediately after post-recovery. This is proven by the reduced tight circumference in the recovery period. Next, in another study conducted by Riverberg in 1992, 
patients were instructed to immerse their injured area alternately in a hot and cold tank or whirlpool. The study used a time ratio of 5 ratio 2 in a temperature of around 40 to 43.3 degrees Celsius and 10 to 15 degrees Celsius for hot and cold water respectively. Then, it was found that contrast bath treatment was proven to have the ability to reduce swelling through the method of increasing the blood flow due to vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Lastly, in an article by Cochrane in 2004, he made a study where several articles regarding contrast water therapy were done for athletes. Thus, it was found in the study review that alternating between hot and cold water treatment could promote vasodilation and vasoconstriction where it will cause a pumping action in order to reduce the swelling of injured area. That's all from us. Thank you.